Hello everyone, uh, this is Miss Magic Animations here to give a slight tutorial in Blender. Uh, Blender is a free software uh, shared by the Blender Foundation, and here I'm going to talk about this script called HairNet. And it's... now, th this is uh, how it's set up in Blender when you first open it. Let's see. Uh, let me turn on the screencast keys, just in case. Okay. Uh, the screencast keys actually will enable you to be able to see what I'm doing just so that you're inquiring like, what am I pressing? You know, like, oh. But anyway, um, the the hairnet uh, script is actually a download that you can find in the Blender scripts. So here you go into the wikiblender.org scripts and it's right here under the add-ons. Now it is an external add-on and right now it actually displays it as only being partially complete, but um, I have found it to be very, very, very interesting. Uh, sorry, I, I, my mouse was on Hair Lab. Um, actually, I was experimenting with both of these, but uh, yeah, they're very, very useful in certain ways because if you notice, in 3D animation, hair is a very, very difficult thing for you to do. It is very, very very, very time-consuming. Um, if you notice, like, there was a lot of money invested into Tangled where they had to put in a lot of the hair. Hair ke keeps getting better. The hair technology keeps make, um, getting better, but sometimes there's there are a lot of glitches in hair. And in earlier films, you can actually notice, although if you have a trained eye. So, how do you get the script? Well, uh, first you click on this. Uh, you know, you click on this, and it'll go down. It, oh, also, it'll tell you what it does. You know, select hair, mesh object, then hair, receive object, and click add hair in the hair net panel. Now, I'm actually going to show a little bit more. Um, what did, so what does hair net do? Uh, it actually makes hair out of polygonal hair. So say that you have, like, a video game character who, you know, has hair like this, but then you wanted them to have more realistic hair, like hair, hair, hair. Um, like an FMV, you know, you wanted to create something even more realistic. Uh, you could have, you, you don't have to alter anything, you know, because you don't want to be able to create, like, oh man, I have to go back and make the exact same polygonal hair. There are other methods, but uh, right now I'm actually interested in this. Hopefully the developer will uh, go deeper into establishing this a bit more. Right here, it'll tell you a little bit more about how to use it. But here, you will, the current version download, you click it here, and it'll t give you the download. And it's in um, this format, like a dot .py. So, what do you do? Um, first, we have to go to orthographic. See? Um, now, just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to add a sphere because spheres are much, much better in this case. So, um, I just want to make sure that the location and the rotation and scale are set, because it's actually very important that you do that, otherwise the hair might go everywhere. Um, but anyway, oh, um, once you have your mm, that set up, uh, when you have um, the hairnet downloaded, you want to be able to click next to it, you know, user, because obviously you downloaded it. So, yeah, you click on that. You can save it into user save um, user settings, but right now I'm actually not going to primarily use it. I'm just going to demonstrate it here. So, you have uh, this shape, this sphere, and right now we're actually going to add some hair on the sphere. So, what do we do first? Is well, you want to do a plane. It'll only take planes for um, some strange reason. Well, I mean, not, not a strange reason, it's because of their meshes, but, yeah. And you want to be able to model this a little bit thin, just for the sake of hairstyle. Do 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 do. Alright. Um, and you want it to be, like, on the edge of it. You want, you want the plane to be, like, in the sphere, like, almost as though the hair um, is it within it and it's attached to it, but also it's important that the plane, that it has multiple vertices because that's how the hair is calculated. It's calculated by the vertices and the 
and the edges, you know, how many edges are there. Um, also, for some reason, if you have like multiple planes, you know, within edit mode, you want to make sure that they're they have the exact same amount of vertices. They have to have the exact same amount. I don't know why. I hope that the developer can uh, do something more with this plug, um, this script, because I think it, it can be very, very useful in the future. But um, well, let's see. So right now, I'm going to subdivide it to give it multiple edges. All right, um, let's try 10, which is the maximum here, but you know, you could press W again and have more, but uh, just for the sake of this tutorial. So now I'm just gonna model the hair just a little bit. Just so that it has a slight look to it. Again, it's not perfect, you know, just really, really weird looking hair. Yeah. I'm just trying to create this really weird, kind of like a, a bang. You know how characters have bangs hanging to the side? Yeah, try that. Alright, so now it's created. Da da. Oh, um, maybe it would be nice to have it sm. No, no, no. It's also important that if you're going to uh, size cer the vertices, try not to have uh, connected to it. For some reason, it'll glitch if you have it to in, in proportional editing. I don't know why, so I actually do recommend that if you want to size them, you just do it manually. For some reason, it calculates as, oh, the um, they're not in the same size or something like that, and I, I just find that to be very, very odd. But yeah, just manually do it. All right. All right. Ta da. There. And now you want to be able to set a material onto the sphere just so that you can see the difference between the two. Yeah. Um, I'll move the camera a little bit closer to the view just so that we can see how it looks. Alright. Add a new material to the sphere just a random color, just so that you can distinguish this from this. And now, you select this, then you go to editing, and you want to select the edge that you want attached to the sphere, it, it, and then you want to be able to create a seam on it. Mark seam. It'll indicate a red line across. It's essentially cutting through. Right, and now we go here. Now you want to select this, and then select the sphere. Oh, wait! It's important that we apply location, apply the scale, apply edge, just in case. Because again, as I mentioned, otherwise the hair will be somewhere else because we moved it. So you first select this. Then select the sphere, and then click Add Hair. Ta-da! Wonderful, isn't it? Now you have hair, and you can hide this if you like, or actually move it to a different layer if you'd like. But yeah, you have hair. Isn't that neat? Do -do -do -do. Hold on. Let me try to make the window just a little bit bigger on the side. Um, yeah, so now you have hair attached to it, and it rec it's now created its own particle system on the sphere. I do caution, do not change any of this. 
For some reason, if you change any of this, it'll go all wacky crackers and bonkers. Do not change the emission number or the hair length, because it was apparently already established once you clicked, uh, w once you made that hair mesh. So now you have hair. Um, now let's see how it looks. Alright, not bad. But it's the same color as this, and you want it to look like hair. You know how hair, at the very, very tips, it has this transparent look? Well, let's give it that look, shall we? Alright, now the reason why it's blue is because it's rendering the material as one, and the sphere is m using material one. So let's make a new material, new. And now we're going to put down the specular, turn on transparency, turn the alpha all the way down. Yeah, I know, right now it looks completely blank, but there is a purpose to the madness, there is a reason. Yeah, you select this, and then you go to textures, select new, and then select blend, and then strand particle under mapping, ramp, but also because you want this to be displayed, select alpha. Alright, see, there. Now we're getting somewhere. Now select this. If, if you notice the roots right here are transparent and that's because this little doohickey, the, this little marker, it corresponds to the ends right here. So we don't want it to be transparent and we don't want it to be black. Let's select a nice shade of brown. All right. And turn the alpha all the way up, not making it transparent. All right there. We're starting to make some progress. Now here, probably a little, you want it to be lighter. Not that color. Alright. And you want it to be transparent. You can add another uh, little marker. It usually helps, just giving it more of a textury feel. But yeah, this is how it'll look. And now, let's go to the particles on the tab. And then under Render, and in Materials, select Material 2. And now it'll uh, go into Material 2. So let's see how it looks. Alright, so now we have hair. Ta-da! Now again, I really do hope that the developer of this script can do something more with it, because I think it is amazing how simple you can create do the possibilities of it are immense. You can create characters with mesh hair and then automatically transfer the mesh hair into real hair, which I think would be amazing. And I think the developer uh, or the script writer, you know, the person should do something with it. Now, what you, what can you do with this? Uh, now, because I, s as I said, you know, don't t change the emission don't change the hair length. You can use hair dynamics if you'd like. You know, it, what it, hair dynamics does is um, it gives it the flow and the physics. You know, like hair falling. And what's interesting is that um, because of how the mesh was set up automatically, it gave itself children. Now we can change the style. <coughs> pardon me. We can change the style to curl, radial, wave, braid. But as I said before, don't change the emission or anything like that. There is also another problem. Uh, do not do particle edit mode on this. For some reason, it'll uh, mess it up in s a certain way, and it'll continuously try to brush on it, and it'll mess it up and have all the hairs everywhere. Now, let's see how the hair looks. Ah, see? Yeah, this is what you can do with the hair net add-on. So I do encourage artists to use it if you can. It can be a little bit hard to use, and as I said before, I do see potential in it being used. I hope that you know the developer is listening. Um, 
yeah, thank you for your time. Goodbye.